is the Explosion Network's Fast and Furious podcast, and we don't have friends. We have family. Each week in the lead up to Fast and Furious 9, will she'll be cracking a corona to discuss the films, characters, music, and more of the Fast saga. My name's Dylan Blight, and joining me today on this very show, Ashley Hobley. Hey Dylan, excited to be here, because as you just said before we started the show, you don't care if I'm sick as a dog or in be- bed with Beyonce, you call, I show. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. Because that's actually what we were just talking about. <laughs> it's like an in joke that works because it's also like associated to the episode somewhat. So that was good. Um, and also here, Kira Marchant. I can't. I can't even try and compete with that. I'm look. I'm. I'm not the funny member of Explosion Network. I'll just admit that now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's carry on with the show and you know live our lives, shall we? Yeah, this, I mean the best part's over now as it is every week. But, it's all um, done. You can just you can just leave if you'd like. Um, yeah. Unless Ash sure. is going to. Oh no, we need to get to Ash reciting his favorite quote later. That'll be the best yeah. part. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. on today's episode, we are talking <laughs> about the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, released in two thousand and six, directed by Justin Lin, uh, written by Chris Morgan. I'll note that this was their first. For the both of them, Chris Morgan, of course, ends up doing a bunch of them. Justin Lin ends up doing a both of a bunch of them. Uh, main cast of the film: Lucas Black, Shad Moss, aka Bow Wow, Sung Hang, Brian T, Leonardo Nam, Nathalie Kelly, Jason Tobin, and Alden Ray. The synopsis of the film is a teenager becomes a major competitor in the world of drift racing after moving in with his father in Tokyo to avoid a jail sentence in America. It's called drifting. What do you mean drift? The cars are lighter. The tires are slick. When you drift, if you ain't out of control, you ain't in control. Now, I do want to start with... Because we've kind of been leading up to this point of throughout this whole show, this is the one Fast and Furious movie that Ash has not seen. So, Ash, how do you feel about Tokyo Drift? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, it's fun too. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's amusing to have like a, a like you've said before. It's actually about racing, um, which a lot of the other films are not. Um, there is that yeah. crime element still with it, which would be fitting within a Fast and Furious movie. Um, yeah, it's not as prevalent as, as it is in any of the others, though. No, but it's still there. Um, yeah. It is obviously held back by Lucas Black. He was not the greatest <laughs> leading Ugh. man. Uh, I mean, could you pick an accent that more goes against a Japanese person, the <laughs> a Japanese crime. setting? Yeah, I guess. Uh, which I mean, that's I probably what's going purpose. for. Yeah, the yeah. Po- most polar opposite. Uh, yeah, he just a- kind of acts like the most American character at the start, like saying, yeah. "I thought you had freedom over here." <laughs> yeah, I I have a theory that you can go, go back to what you're saying in a second. I have a theory that potentially Justin Lin, if he could have got his way, would have just made it like like he could have brought over like he's better like some warrior characters more than just Han and had like one of those be the star or someone else be the star. You know what I mean? Like he could have made it Asian American comes to Japan and even that would have been an interesting story. But I feel like Universal Studios was like, we need white American front of poster to sell this movie or else it's not going to go. You know what I mean? I feel like that was an important key point that they wouldn't tell you but i feel like that's what it is and then you end up with uh lucas black the most white american (laughs) hey girl (laughs) you can can get yeah what else do you think about it i mean drifting is interesting i guess (laughs) it's very different to everything else um obviously there's the moment where hard dies which is in this film uh it really does not fit very well (laughs) with what happens afterwards i don't think it like Obviously, what we know happens afterwards. It doesn't like doesn't fit. There's a really. lot of retconning, as we call it. There's a lot of retconning. There's a, uh, there's a watching, lot of especially retconning. watching it multiple times. All those two films, like bookending it, like it's hard to. <laughs> it also, 
Go. Feels mm. that way with watching this film and then watching Furious Seven after this. Yes. Well, yeah, we there's... go from 2006 to 2000. And... Yeah, I'd like 15, to say, 16, can I get whatever, one of them flip phones that are really big right now in uh, in Tokyo? Yeah. But by the way, so this film when they retconned <laughs> it, they've retconned it so that Tokyo Drift takes place in 2012. <laughs> yeah. Canonically, in the universe, it takes place in 2012 now. So it makes Tokyo in Fast and Furious backwards and behind the times to the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Because I guess when they made it in 2006, they would have been like, it's set in current yeah. day, I guess, you know. But after all the retconning, they now say it's 2012. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, all well, the flip phones are back, I guess. <laughs> but at the same time, it's just like, whatever, who cares? Like, just accept it and. It was the um, Japanese yeah. renaissance of uh, 2012 where they went back to using technology from 2006. That's all we all remember yeah. that time, right? It was yeah. a very short period, but can, can I ask, it did um, happen. Can I ask, Ash, what, do you see why everybody fell in love with Han from this movie? Yeah, he's like the super charismatic, like wise, like aloof, uh, cool guy. Who eats stuff Who's the, the mentor figure in this? He's like the the pseudo father father figure, mentor figure. Yeah, in, the, in, in this in a lot of ways, and he's like the cool dude. So, I mean, I think it's more interesting watching this now after seeing Han's story all prior. Uh, I imagine watching this first, you'd be like, "Oh, he's a player, and he's like going after yeah. all these chicks and everything." But now watching this, you're like, "Oh, he's just trying to fill that hole that Giselle left." Yeah, Giselle left. Yeah. You can tell My- even it even connects from his, you know, the the thing of um in Bed Luck Tomorrow, he is a heavy smoker, and then throughout the movies we've seen that he eats snacks to try and like compensate for that addiction. It's very much the same of he's lost Giselle. He's now kind of being this player such womanizer to kind of compensate now, to kind of help with him deal with that emotion and that loss. Um mm. that is it's pretty interesting. Yeah, this is this is all one of my favorite things about the Fast and Furious fr- franchise these days is that kind of like some stuff they do in Star Wars where it's like they they release a film and or they release a book or whatever else and it kind of helps you like somewhat proper canon retcon slash also like head canon retcon but it allows you to look at characters for a different lens even if it isn't specifically said in the film. You know what I mean? It's so like, it's like how it, I... when we talk about the Rogue One Darth Vader thing yes, in New exactly. Hope. Where that's that's fan retconning because we're 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 now going oh he gets super angry at the end of Rogue One so then that explains why he's super angry at, at the start of New Hope of course that isn't actually what happened because Rogue One didn't come out until a very long time after however that's now how we all view that film and uh, of course for the first time I watched this I was just like Han's cool whatever but ever since watching all those other films yeah I exactly what you, you're talking about now it's all this kind of retconning in the way that I watch it and view Han is that he's uh, all the womanizing stuff and what whatever else is because of Giselle and the way he acts is because of Giselle and what he's been through and whatever else. So yeah, it's, it's like, <laughs> that's, that's all I always like people like silly mindless action movies. I'm like, man, you should see, I could write a thesis on like character stories. <laughs> <for these Yeah. laughs> fucking movies. Uh, any other uh, initial thoughts on the movie, Ash? Things? No, I mean, everybody else is kind of fine. Like the, the love interest is okay. The dad's all right. Um, Bow Wow is fine. I mean, he's kind yeah. of annoying, Twinkie. but what he, he he plays the role fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, Karen, what a what, what? How do you feel about the movie? And like, this, a, is, this is been a while since you watched it, or no? I think I watch this fairly regularly somehow, because <laughs> um, it's one of my favorites. And I think, and I think it's the same for you and me, Dylan, where it's just kind of one of those movies from you know we grew up around about the same time the same kind of age this was the coolest movie yeah for like, like a year so or so cool when i was in school and yeah. i just there's something about it that no matter and i know as i get older and as i get a better appreciation of movies and television and media from being osmos from osmosis of talking to you two more and more and being around you both more and more um every time i watch movies that i love i definitely pick up on things that i didn't pick up on like Sean's accent was probably the most grating thing in this viewing of the movie that I've ever viewed before. Sometimes his lines, I'm just like, fucking hell, what is going on? Like, this is... Twanky. Yeah, Twanky. like, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, wabaki, you know? It's wabaki. wabaki. 
It's just like, <laughs> you're like fucking hell. Okay. Um, but no, this movie is still so much fun. I really like um, Han and DK's relationship. I enjoy, I enjoy DK's whole side story to this because I think it, it does something that it, in the leading up to this point and around this point, it gives the the antagonist of the movie some kind of layered backstory and reasoning to why he is the way he is um, that you don't really get in um, Fast and Furious. Like you see more of his interactions with his uncle. You see him being a bit more of it's you know this whole DK persona is a bit more of a a, fa- a face for him to you know look more powerful in front of the people that are in his community whereas really he is this kind of underling to a to a real gangster in the yakuza that i think is very interesting um this has some of my favorite cars in the whole thing like i really love the cars in this movie um and yeah just overall this movie is just fun and it has a great soundtrack yeah um Everything, everything you just said. I mean, yeah, I, this was the coolest movie in school. Everyone would just listen to the soundtrack pretty much on repeat, either through their phone, where they were, you could have like two songs on your phone at the time, uh, and they would install that many unless you were fancy enough to have a uh, what, fucking, I don't know, 20, 10, 20 megabyte fucking SD card to put in your flip phone or whatever we had uh, in school at the time. Uh, and everyone would just be blasting fucking Tokyo <laughs> Drift, like walking around the playground and whatever and else. Do you ever, do you also have the point now where Tokyo, even though it's a country and you know it's Japan and you know the value of Tokyo, when you hear Tokyo, you instantly mentally connect it to Tokyo Drift and you instantly hear the song, like the main Tokyo Drift song out of this. It happens all the time for me. Anytime somebody mentions yeah. it, yeah. I, f- yeah. Yeah. I feel like singing the start of that song every single time. I was. Th- I was thinking about while watching it, uh, like the the Tokyo element of this and like connection wise, this would have been like my first, I would say, connect, like look at Tokyo slash Japan also. Because this was all before I started, like the, I'd seen this before I even started watching any sort of anime or anything like that. So this this was like my first, like watching this movie, I was like, oh, this is Japan. You know, and of course, this movie isn't like the the greatest example of like, well, this is what Japan's really like, kind of thing. But at the time, I remember watching this in high school and being like, Japan's awesome. Like, I want, you know, I want to go to Japan. Look at this shit. This place looks awesome. Uh, So yeah, I, I, I every time I do hear this song, it's like, yeah, 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 tie it all in. But yeah, Um, I agree. Obviously, that Lucas Black. Uh, slash Shane Boswell. I mean, I, I don't dislike the character in particular. I, I do feel like they purposely did the character. Hamed it up. Yeah, like I feel like that they, they they went for something on purpose. Like speci- like really went for like the most stereotypical American guy. But like it just they went a little bit too far. But I also I've seen it so many times that it doesn't actually annoy me because I I got past that point a, a while like a while ago. Now I just accept it for what it is. One thing I do want to talk about, though, before moving on to different things is how we feel about the opening of the movie because I always found the opening of the movie cool slash weird. And even watching it now, I'm like, it's so funny. They spend like 15 minutes doing this whole like American setup thing. Like the, the whole opening yeah. credit scene is, goes for like several With the minutes. the kid from Home Improvement. Take you into school. Yeah, like they show you all around the school. They they build that guy up to be such an arsehole. They do the whole race. They spend a lot of money on that race, that opening race, of course. And then they spend time in the cop plays and whatever. Like they spend a long time getting to Tokyo, really, in retrospect. Like, do, does it, well, is it fine? It, does it work? I always find it, it, for me, it's always been a thing of seeing the school is so different to Australian slash English schools that I'm always like, slash bewildered or amazed at watching those kind of that slow motion kind well, of. I th- I think watching it now, it's like even more relevant with all the shootings yeah. that they have in schools more now compared to back then. So yeah, it's like oh, I know it's. I mean, it it's entirely there to set up that Sean is a great driver. Um, so then when he gets thrashed in that first drift race, uh, it's like oh, he's completely out of his element. Yeah, well, it, it also shows he's just like super rash guess has a love for his car there's also the there's like a there's like a duo line where between this and um 
what other Fast and Furious movie is? I can't remember which one is now. I think it's like Too Fast, Too Furious. Where, like, at the start here where the, the dude's like talking about his Ferrari or whatever it is, the rich kid. He's like, it's got two point whatever, six horsepower, some bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And then Sean turns and goes, ah, oh, you can, it can read the brochure. I, I think it's like something that Tyrese also says in Too Fast, Too Furious or something like that to someone. Uh, the cop or someone like that, I think. Something along oh, no, those lines. It's, um, no, no, no. It's uh, very similar to... Um, when Brian is questioning his partner, like his yes. like the supposed partner, yes. and he's like, "I didn't know that pizza places now sold motors." Yeah, um, and he's, yeah, it's that kind of thing. Yeah, it's like, it's like very similar to that. And I always wonder if they did it on purpose, like as a sort of like tie-in sort of thing. But it's similar sort of line, but also works for sh- like showing that Sean is um like he, he's a gearhead. Like he's not just likes cars, can like wants to go fast like the other dude. He he does obviously work with them and knows enough because that is important to these movies all the people all the characters in the fast and furious franchise they're not just like oh i like pressing my foot to the pedal but like they all understand and could work cars it also it also shows that he has almost a better understanding of uh cars than say brian did when we first met brian because probably he kind of understands in that first race you can see him understanding that okay, I'm not going to beat this car in an out-and-out race. I'm not going to be that egotistical. I'm going to... Try and cheat. Do, like, to, to just do, like, I'll find my own. I'll make a shortcut or something. Of, like, it's, it's, it shows he's not as egotistical as, say, Brian is at the start of Fast and Furious, where he's just thinking he can just fucking put a heap of NOS in it and just gear it yep. out. Like that's go for it. gold. Yeah. Work it all out. Yeah. Um. All right, so... Let's get into the family slash talking about some of these other key characters in this movie. So first of all, of course, we meet Sean Boswell, who we're talking about right now, who shows up briefly next week in Furious 7. And then, of course, is going to be showing up in Fast and Furious 9. We don't know how what? much time. Yeah, Wait, like- what? You blew my mind. That I'll, I'll put it out there before these two idiots make fun of me. <laughs> I didn't notice him in the trailer, and these two blew my mind last week when they told me. It was, it was, in case it was you're something. also having your mind blown, if you want to go rewatch the Fast and Furious 9 trailer and the part right before they show the, the little car with a jet engine that's strapped to the top of it, uh, Sean's right there. Like he's, he's kind of, he's getting covered by, uh, Tez or someone, I think, from whoever Tej's it is. Tez's shoulder, show. I think it is. Yeah, Tez's shoulder's kind of covering, but if you pause it at the right second, you will see his gaping, smiling face. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tej, as I like to think that they're like just said we strapped a rocket to it, and then Tej and Roman are like, "You did what?" Like, because <laughs> he's like, "We got, we got this. Let's go." Uh, but yeah, my question is, how, how much time do you reckon we'll actually get with Sean in Nine? And how are you going to feel? How do you reckon it's going to feel to have Sean Boswell, Mister American accent himself, interacting with the rest of the crew? Because you got to remember, we've only ever seen him interact with. Uh, Dom twice, of course, in the after credit sequence of this movie, and then in the tie-in bit next week, and that's it. He's never actually interacted with any of the other core members Can of Fast. Also, and Furious. just to do the math on this, in Fast and Furious Nine, how old is he supposed to be, and how old is he really? Because <sighs> he's, he's got gonna, one he's of got, those. I, like, I think in real life he's like thirty something. I would presume that, like, can, canonically. He's supposed to be, to be like, like nearly 20s. 18 in Tokyo Drift. Like I think he's like 17 turning 18. So let's say this is like a couple years later. He's like he's like young 20s, but in he's reality like he's like early 30. 20s. Yeah, and yeah. it's like he's one of those people that like he's kind of not aged, but at the same time he's aged kind of badly. Like he still I, has. I, so when Oof, they do the thing in gosh. Fear 7... It, it's horrible because it, you can obviously tell it's like like 10 years later and he's aged yeah. and he does not look young at all anymore. But I give, I'm like, whatever. You've, you've done that. It's, it's for a little bit to tie it in. I don't care. I think I'm more, I'm possibly going to be more accepting with nine and I might be able to accept like, oh, he's like supposed to be like 23, 24, but he looks like 30. Like some people do. Like they age really fast. If they were still trying to play him as 18, it would be a big no no but I think because he's at least like younger 20s mid 20s possibly at this point like because I don't really know how the timeline works but you got to think like so Tokyo Drift and Fast and Furious 7 like one right after another and connect right between 7 and 8 there's I think a year or so something like that I don't know how long is going to be between 8 and 9 there could be longer so yeah there's there's time to age him up between all of these at least 
But how, how do you think he's going to go interacting with other people, like talking to Rome and Tej? Like, how do you think he's, the banter is going to go? Is, does it work in your head? Is it fine? Second? I think, I think as long as they do it right, I do think, and this comes with spoilers for next week, with watching the next movie, and I haven't watched Faye, but even watching the next movie, it got to the point early in the next movie where I was like, wow, this team's grown, like, really small. Like, there is really only, like, four main members in this team now. That is that is there, you know, after the end of the next movie. So you kind of like, okay, or four, five, sorry, five. So it would be good if they can interject Sean as another proper member of that team and, and he has good chemistry with them or he almost not to not to say we want him to do that but he almost kind of steps into a similar place as where Brian was not the same because Brian was kind of like a you know a, a leader with Dom but to kind of fulfill that kind of role within the group again would be um would be a good position for him I think I hope they have toned his accent down a little bit more for the new movie I think it, I think you can just straight up ditch it because Scarlet with um whatever, uh, Black Widow was like Russian in Iron Man 2 and then she just suddenly lost it between films. So that's fine. Well, yep. like, just Same with Scarlet Witch. <laughs> she, she yeah, she, yeah, accent, yeah, she had an accent too. She just lost it. So it's fine. Just ditch the accent. <laughs> Ash, how, Ash, how are you going to... How do you reckon he'll go interacting with the... I mean, it'll be fine. I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, it's been several years. He's, he's super cocky in the first... In the film. So whether he's still like super cocky, yeah. I guess. Uh you know yeah we'll, we'll see um the of course our, our update for the family in this movie is we lost Han. there's an asterisk on that because we are <laughs> we are getting him back but like just we to take into account much like shut up <laughs> much like how we talked about like when i take i did note when we lost lady and then we got when we got her back so of course in the current line we this is the film where we uh, lose Han. uh it still sucks to watch even though uh, knowing that he comes back um, I'm so glad that I chose to do this podcast for this current run because it makes it so much more interesting to watch it knowing that like how's he come back sort of thing like compared this- to if we did it like last year and I would have been like fuck man I wish I'd just bring Han back like it's more interesting just to be able to just go I have this cool. really <laughs> bad feeling depending on how they bring Han back but if like I just had this bad feeling halfway through this movie where I was like are they gonna make Han like betray the team like, is he going to come nah. back? Like, I'm like, nah. you can't, though, yeah. right? Like, Justice li- is literally, coming. Literally, no, yeah, Justice is coming. Fine. Literally, Justin Lin, Justice the is director right, of this one, and and um, the who's returning to do nine. And he, his last one he did was uh, six, right? Obviously, he, he stopped when Han, when the, the timeline caught up to his first film, he stopped. And now he's returning. And in, in interviews, he said the sole reason. He chose to come back is because of how much eight fucks with Han. <laughs> not to go, not to skip too much ahead and to spoiling stuff for next week. But like Ash is well aware of well, my rate, next, yeah. my major criticism for eight, and why I, I I really don't like that movie. And I'm so glad that the the major criticism that I had um, walking out of cinema when I wrote my review that I soon saw lots of people online have, and it also turns out that the director, <laughs> who of course has a big attachment to his car- uh, character, Han, um, was like, this shit's fuck, son. And he's like, I'm coming back to wreck on this shit. Fuck all you. <laughs> like, I'm coming back to fix it. I will, I mean- I will say, I, one of the stupidest things I've, I've heard about, the, I've read about the production of this movie was that when Justin Lin was on and he was talking about bringing Han in and making this character Han, the character from Better Luck Tomorrow and all this stuff, the only problem that Universal Pictures had was that he couldn't smoke. Mm-hmm. Which, which is ridiculous in this setting where there is gangsters and like... Yeah underhanded bets and like scantily clad women and just everything going on smoking, smoking is smoking uh, is the bad thing he can't smoke he has to do something else he gets replaced with eating the snacks well, but still, i think it worked out well though because i think that eating didn't the work snacks out very is a lot well. more wholesome gif content than yes smoking han content so it works out quite i mean well. smoking what was you gonna bad. say about what what was you gonna say just before ash about when my the stuff to debate I don't remember Nothing? what I was going to say. I forgot. Moving on. That's fine. 
Um, so yeah, we we lose on extended family. So this is this is people who I wouldn't put in the main family group, but of course we're diving into super Dylan's headcanon and stuff here. I want to point out, of course, this film has Jason Tobin um, plays Earl in this movie, who I've previously pointed out. Uh, <laughs> he uh, also is going to appear in F nine. He, he's the one you can cl- see more clearly than Sean in that. He's shot the one the who attached the he's- rocket to the car. Yes, mm. he is. Uh, he's also the character Virgil in Bed Luck Tomorrow, who I've talked about previously. Virgil, Earl, that's the that's the they're the same character. He's the one who spoilers. I mean, all these fucking things are spoilers. What am I about? He's the one who shoots himself at the end of Bed Luck Tomorrow. And my the fan theory that I talked about before is that he they run off to Tokyo. Well, they go on the run basically together, and this is where they end up. Anyway, he's he's Han's cousin. That's that's my that's head gun. Then we also have Alden Ray in this movie. So Alden. Uh, he, he plays Alden in Tokyo Drift, and in Bad Luck Tomorrow he played Old Alden with a U. So one's A L D E N, the other one's U L D N. Is the character he played Bad Luck Tomorrow? Um, he's the, uh, I guess the easiest way to describe it is just he's the bigger dude in Tokyo Drift. Like he doesn't have many lines; he has a couple lines, but he's always like sort of part of the the Han crew. You'll see together, like he, he he'll be he's standing. Not the, next- he's not the like the the person that does the race, but the first race between, um, uh, freaking DK and and Sean. He's not the no. starting line person. No, no, I no, love no, him. No. He's a great character. He is. I think he was. Like, I can't remember who did that. That's Actually, like the guy with the spiky hair, and he's like really no, cool no, 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 uh, and then you've got like, of course, Han. That's part of that group. And then Sean. And then um, whatever, oh no, I uh, do. I have, okay, okay, I know which one. Yep. Yeah. So he doesn't have much, but I just I, I do think it's worth pointing out that he head cannon same character from Bad Luck Tomorrow because <laughs> <laughs> he, he was part of the he's part of the team in Bad Luck Tomorrow. He, I think his first scene is he's he's uh, friends with um. <sighs> Fuck uh, the dude, you know, like they do the whole re- the dude who ends up joining after he does the report, and they, he sets up the whole like free uh, Ben or whatever like sign. Like th- this dude's one of the dudes who's like holding up the sign saying like free Ben. He's like friends with that that guy. Like that's how they get introduced. Right. Like, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's the, Dylan's head can, can hashtag. He has hair in Better Luck Tomorrow, if I remember rightly. Yes, I believe yes. so. Um, so possible people that could show up in fast nine that would i think if they show up in another movie i would they if they showed up in the right context then they would get ca- uh, canonized into the quote-unquote family so as i said before you got Rico, rico or rico i'm not sure how you properly say it but um played by kiko Kitawa- kitawaga yep. um she helps out Earl in the in tokyo drift she's the one who's seen helping out tuning all the cars and checking stuff and all that sort of stuff she's like kind of his right hand uh woman throughout the movie she doesn't have many lines but she's there and then you've of course got neela played by nafali nafali i don't know uh Kel- keely who of course is sean boswell right it's just got a h in it is it yeah it's, I thought yeah, it's, natalie. Natalie. Oh, okay, it's just sorry. natalie it's just got a random h showing up in it okay weird um yeah so she she of course if she I don't know. Like, will she appear in F9 still with Sean? Um, I'm going to say, I, I actually, I'll put it at 50 50. I honestly feel like they could have it come in for a day, shoot a scene. It would make fans of Tokyo Drift quite happy to see them together, of course. And then it doesn't mean she has to be around for the majority of the, the stuff we've shown in it. But especially if they shoot a scene in Tokyo, like or like even if it's shot in America to look like Tokyo, just for like a quick one with him before they come to America or something like that. You know, like say like Dom calls them up or something and she's there and like has a couple uh, a quick interaction with him or something like that. that. Just for the fans, I think that would be like, that would be cool. I I have to go. It's hard. It's yeah, it's hard, he's back. I've gotta go. It's hard, yeehaw. That <laughs> since you brought that up. <laughs> that was, that, that, I think that is actually something quite important to take into account for nine. 
Like everyone's talking about like, oh, if Han comes back, that's going to be really cool. Like it'll be really cool for Dom. Like Dom sh- misses him. Like he's part of the family, all these sorts of things. I think a lot of people are missing how, if they play it correctly, how they can make that a really quite emotional and interesting storyline to include Sean as part of the main cast because for him, it would also be quite a big thing. That's what I'm saying because we are talking about him before. In this in Tokyo Drift, he Han is Sean's like mentor, father figure. I, you know these sorts of brother. things. Like I get yeah. the feeling in the trailer though that Han is the reason that they're there. Yeah. Like, Han, I, think I get the reason that I yeah, get. The I feel feeling like Han shows that, up very early in the movie, but I, I just think that I think we won't see them finding out that Han's alive. Like I feel like those characters, the start of the movie is what you're. That, like those characters yeah. would have already known Han is still alive. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, which is which is sad in missing out on that possible character. Moment, no, because we're but- going to get Tokyo Drift two. <laughs> so like it doesn't, that doesn't count as number 10 or 11 that's it's gonna off. go it's back it's yeah it's, own, okay. it's, its own spin-off refix. franchise now it's it's, yep. it's great everyone let's go um all righty so let's get into and, and has anyone before we move on the favorite line does anyone have any other random things i want to point out listen uh, tokyo drift scenes things clearly wanna... dk needs to come back um he only f- just fell down a cliff so you know he <laughs> just <laughs> fell down a cliff you know he only just fell down. I like how his uncle is completely fine. He's like, yeah, you're okay, even though you knocked my nephew off a cliff. Should certainly do his death. <laughs> Technically, he kind of calls it himself, so. I mean, why why was he so trying to knock him off? Why couldn't you just try and beat him fair know. and square? I'm pretty sure he would have had also, him. Also, I just remember, because uh, you reminded me of the last race sequence. No, has either of you watched Initial D? No. Has watched what? Initial D, the anime. No. Yeah. So Initial D has is a drifting, street racing anime oh, that's yeah. set in, yeah. And they have a lot of races that take place on very similar mountains to like the one that Tokyo Drift has at the very end of it. I want, Although I watched Tokyo Drift first, I think one of the reasons I got so heavy into Initial D, which I probably started watching like a year later-ish, in high school, I think one of the reasons I started loving that anime so much is because a it was about street racing, which of course had a affliction for it at the time, but also because lots of stuff in it just reminded me of Tokyo Drift. So in, in, if you want more street racing sort of stuff uh, in in anime form, initial D in case you don't know that's the thing. Um, now let's move on to favorite line. Of course, every Fast and Furious movie has some great and also at times corny but gratifying dialogue. I'm going to pass the baton to set the, the bar high. Ashley Hobley, what is your favorite line from this movie? <laughs> I have money. It's trust and character I need around me. You know, who cho- you choose to be around you lets you know who you are. And one car in exchange for knowing what a man's made of, that's a price I can live with. Went for some heartfelt shit this week. Yeah. No, no uh, joking lines. No joking lines. I, I will follow heartfelt up yours movie. because mine's. Yeah, it's true. I'll follow up mine because mine also is a Han quote that is a serious one, which is the one I talked about like a week or so ago. And I think I got it like 90% right because I couldn't remember it fully, but it's where he says, life's simple. You make choices, you don't look back. So my Han quote that always stands out to me. Especially, I like that quote more, like in the context whenever I've rewatched this movie since like Giselle and stuff, I always like read that line as like he's just hurting. You know, the man's hurting. Um, Kieran, what's your favorite line for this? So one? let's round out to round out the uh, the Han the Han segment of this <laughs> uh, of this of this segment. Um, there's no wax on or wax off in drifting. The first drifters invented drifting out here in the mountains by feeling it. So feel it, like it's just just like I don't do it justice. I can't do an impression like Ashley Hobley can. <laughs> it's just one of those like very fluid kind of just Han moments where he has this coolness to him that uh. Is is really great. It's really fun. There's a personification of the character. Um, all right. So for the mix, of course, we're picking two songs each and dropping them into the Ultimate Fast Saga playlist that you can find on Spotify right now. Link is in the description. My two songs. I think obviously the first one is given. There's no way around it. Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious, Teriyaki Boys. There's no way to escape it. And then my second one is Six Days Remix by DJ Shadow and Moz Death, which was my at apart from Tokyo Drift was always my favorite song off the soundtrack. And I would mix 
because uh, when this came out, I was also getting into video editing and I would just use this song and I would mix skate videos to it all the time and random like trailers to stuff. Like I would just take this song and I would constantly edit stuff to it over and over and over and over. And that's uh, what like stands out in my memory from it and why I kind of love it so much. Ash, what are you adding? Uh, I also had Tokyo Drift. I mean, that it, it, you need to have it. Yeah. Uh, and then I also went The Barracuda by the 5, 6, 7, 8th. Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Uh, Karen, what do you got? Um, so both of you destroyed me on this one. That's fine. Um, six Days remix because it's it's. I think it it sets. It does something where the moment I see this and hear this song, I'm like, I'm watching Tokyo Drift. Like this is let's let's go. Like it's like that first song of the movie. It's it's fantastic. Um, and I also had the Barracuda by the five, sixes, and seven, and eight. It's by the way, my Kill Bill reference was because they have a song in they play in Kill they Bill. They play that exact song. Yes, they're literally yeah. in the movie, in the background. Yeah. Like they're playing. No, it's um, <laughs> it's a good song, and it's it's very uh, unique in this movie, especially with everything else that's being played. Yep. Uh, so they'll do it for this week's episode. Looks like we're all out of NOS. <laughs> He said said the line. You can follow us all on Twitter by heading to explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. Next week, of course, we're catching right up. We're going to be discussing Fast and Furious 7 or Furious 7. I don't know. These movies are called different things in different countries uh, once they get past four. Um, So make sure you watch that movie before the episode drops. And remember that hashtag justice is coming. So, uh, what? Kanatu Disuka. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say is it though in Japanese? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>